else here is shy. <laughs> I'm able to stand before you on a TEDx stage today because of an exercise that I would like to share with you. So this exercise requires almost no flexibility and with regular practice teaches your brain to be assertive. It's called blind contour drawing or drawing without looking at drawing the contours without looking at the page. It teaches hand-eye coordination and True story, it's true. Okay, I'm gonna get there. I'm here with you today on the TEDx stage because I wanna share this blind contour exercise with you. It requires almost no flexibility, it, and it helps your brain be assertive. It's um, drawing the edges without looking at the page, allowing the time to truly observe without passing judgment. You learn how to learn how to draw by practicing seeing through touch. It teaches you to draw what you see instead of what you think you see. It connects your hand-eye coordination. So believe it or not, I was a shy but creative kid. I grew up in beautiful central Missouri, and in 1986, I moved to suburban Washington, D.C. Totally night and day difference. When I moved to Washington, I had the good fortune to attend a visual and performing arts high school where I learned to make blind contour drawings. I immediately fell in love with the process. No one expected me to make a masterpiece, and the process took away the intimidation of the blank page and the fear that I was gonna make a fool of myself in front of my peers. I really loved the quirky and sometimes amazingly accurate drawings that were left behind, so I continued long after like the lessons of art school were over. With daily blind contour practice, the part of my brain in charge of shy shrunk. I became more assertive, better at seeing, and my hand-eye coordination became sharp enough to catch the bouquet at weddings regularly. Thank you. So enough about me. Let's get to the science and what happens when you make a blind contour drawing. The left side of your brain is in charge of the rigid things with rules, like cognitive and spatial development and language. Um, the left brain is efficient. It looks at an object once, creates an understanding of that, compresses it, stores it away, and recalls it when you need that information again, seeing something similar, even if your understanding is not completely accurate. The left brain is the enemy of seeing. Now the right brain, way touchy-feely, totally moment. It learns about the world through seeing and sensing and feeling and tasting and touching, just all this energy around you, the right brain is just sucking it up. It's intuitive, it's thoughtful, and it's subjective and mostly responsible for the mindfulness that you need for blind contour drawing. Okay, are you guys ready to try your hand at blind contour drawing? What? <laughs> your brains are saying, I can't draw. I don't know how, it's too complicated. I don't know where to start. I don't have a pen and paper. I'm off the hook, sorry. The left brain has logical excuses and that's just its job. But really, blind contour drawing is all about the practice, not the results. When you engage in blind contour, the right side of the brain becomes assertive and sends a nonverbal message through the corpus callosum, that's the email system that kind of connects your brains. And loosely translated, the message says, Dear Lefty, shh, I'm having another one of my sensory parties. You're totally not invited. Heart miss right. As Lefty complies with the neighbor's request to shh, the process of seeing starts. And your eyes trace the sequential details that make up 
that describe the length, width, and depth, describing the whole form. Okay, jazz hands, everybody. Drawing fingers up to the side, hanging out in your peripheral vision. Focus on the slide, deep breath. Slowly trace the edges of the teapot with your eyes. Follow your finger with your finger. As you narrow your focus, your brain is powering down. By noticing the tiny details, we are opening the connections and pathways, feeling the lines and angles of what we see before us, etching a sensory blueprint on the brain. We are engaging the part of our brain responsible for mindful meditation. Fingers down, thank you for participating. <laughs> now science says meditation is really terrific stuff with tons of health benefits. You should do it every day. But enough about science, let's get back to me. <laughs> By regularly drawing people, events, and performances, I learned to draw quickly. I experimented with pens and paper. I made mistakes. I observed, adapted, and made more mistakes. Over time, I learned to see the blind contour lines in my sketchbook like a shorthand language. In my studio practice, I learned to translate those lines into things like paintings that tell a story and show space and movement with color. As the practice of drawing transformed my brain and my lines became more assertive, shyness dissipated, and I learned to push the medium beyond an exercise that connects hand-eye coordination. Today, I use blind contour to engage guests at events and parties by quickly drawing portraits using quick and quirky lines to connect with the world beyond neurons. Thank you.